Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia, aka Call Me Crafty Al, here on the Not Too Shabby channel to see if we can create a bee-themed rocker card without any special dies. I hope you'll stick around and see if I can do this. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the Not Too Shabby channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button below and ringing the bell for notifications. There's a whole team of creators that share their projects here, and I know that you'll love to be subscribed. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. Today, I'm going to be using this bee theme stamp set from Darcy's that I got from Not Too Shabby. It is called Bee Gray Ear and will be linked in that description box. Also in the description box is a coupon code that you can save 10% on most items in the store. And did you know that Not Too Shabby doesn't only sell their own line of wonderful products, they also sell a wide variety from other companies. So while you're there, look around and see if there's something you might want to gift yourself for the upcoming holidays. The other day on my channel, I shared how I made this teacher thank you card using the same stamp set. I will have it linked in the description box below if you want to check it out and get another idea of a way to use the stamp set. Today though, like I mentioned, we're going to try to make a rocker card. I have been seeing quite a few of these lately and I'm going to see if I can use my electronic cutter and some cardstock and make my own rocker card base. Let me know in the comment section if you've made one of these cards yet. As I start the process, I will be sure to let you know other products and tools that I add, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my rocker card, since I don't have those special dies, I wanted to see if I could just cut circles and make that work. Now because my largest circle die that I own is only about 4 inches wide and I knew I wanted something larger, I use my Silhouette software and my electronic cutter to cut a piece of yellow cardstock, it's kind of a shiny, into a 5.5 inch circle and then I cut a piece of plain white cardstock into a 5 and a quarter inch circle and you'll see here they mat up just nicely. For this next step, I brought in a tool that cuts and scores, and for the yellow piece of cardstock, I want to score that in half for the rocker part of the card. Now because it's five and a half inches wide, I'm going to butt it up against that plastic guide there and then make a score line at two and three quarters inches. I do go kind of slowly, and I go a few times just to make sure I don't tear the cardstock but yet I still get a good score. Then using the cutting part of this tool, I line up my smaller circle at the two and five eighths inch mark and cut that in half. Now I have two pieces of white, one for the front and one for the inside for my personal message. To add a little extra texture to the card front, I brought in this honeycomb embossing folder and ran one piece of the white cardstock through my die cutter with that. You'll notice here there are kind of two sides you could use and I will be having the flat one facing up just so later I have more surface area to glue my letters to. Speaking of gluing, I went ahead and adhered this piece to the card front. Now because there were only just a few little bumps that were going to get adhesive, I did go ahead and put a little extra on there. Now you'll see here how it will rock back and forth. I placed the other piece of white cardstock on the inside and then I made sure to bring in my bone folder and reinforce that score line. 
Now it's time to get out that adorable stamp set and put it to use. Today I'll be using the single B in the upper left and because I will be coloring it later with some alcohol markers, I am using Nina Solar White cardstock and Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Because it is a new stamp and I want to make sure and get a nice solid image, after putting it in my Misty, I did ink it up and stamp it twice. Then to ensure the ink wouldn't bleed when I did the coloring, I quickly brought in my heat tool and just helped dry that ink. For my coloring today, I'm going to be using these four tri-blend markers from Spectrum Noir and just doing some simple coloring on my B. I started with one of the lighter markers, the light yellow blend, and I colored in three of the stripes that I wanted yellow. For this, I'm going to saturate each stripe with the light color in the marker, then come back in with the dark and add shadows on each side. Then I just barely kind of blend those out with the medium and then bring in the light marker to finish off the blending. I finished coloring the rest of the B in the same way, just changing which color marker that I used. Now I am going to show the full coloring process because I know lately I've been enjoying watching these just to kind of learn more about coloring and shading. But if you're not interested in seeing that whole process, you can skip to about 8 minutes and 30 seconds in this video. Now if you do want to see it, I hope you'll enjoy this little look along with some music. Once my little gal was all colored in, I took this piece over to my brother's scan and cut, and I cut that out with just a small white border. This set was originally made to be school or teacher related, but I decided to make it a happy birthday card. I brought in a couple different dies, happy and birthday, and then a small alphabet set. And I'm going to create a play on happy birthday with bees, and I'm going to make this hap bee birthday. Once I had an idea of where my bee would be placed on the rocker card, I did want to make sure some of it hung off the top. I added adhesive to the lower part of my die cut bee, and then I set that aside for about 5 minutes to dry. Now while that was drying, I started to work on my sentiment. The first thing I did was chop off the P and the Y from Happy. I did leave the tail on the P just so later it looks like the tail kind of flows into the capital B and it also helped me with placement. Now once the B was dry, I once again kind of just figured out where I wanted each of my letters to go and then I added adhesive to the back and put this onto the card. I did let this dry again for about 5 minutes before moving on.
I think the way this rocks is so fun. Now before I finish the card off, I did want to add a little bling. And because I misplaced the dot above my eye and birthday, I brought in this collection of gems from Gina Marie Designs and I placed a yellow one where the dot would be. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's rocker card without any special dies. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.